Yo, 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 it's your boy Maxel Guapo, man. Street Certified News, man. And this is Street Certified Podcast, Rainbow Push, Push Awards 2022 Special Edition, man. I'm here with the actor, Joseph Zakor, man. How's it going? Well done on the pronunciation of the name. I got it right. Hey, listen, you got it perfect. And I can't <laughs> believe it, it, it didn't, wasn't pre, uh, Tom, Tommy usually comes first. No, nah, no, nah, man. I was going to call you Tommy, <laughs> man, but you know. Call me I Tommy, call me Joseph, just call me. Bro, I seen you other stuff too, man. Yeah. One of my favorite shows, Ozarks. Ozark, that's right. Man, bro, you had a you had a pretty big part in that show, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that pretty big part got blown away, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny, man. Uh, so how you like like working in Chicago, man? Like, it's what crazy. made you bring your show here? Well, I was not part of that uh, the decision to bring it to Chicago. Okay. That was the original. Uh, that was Courtney Kemp's uh, ultimate decision, the creator okay. of the Power Show. Uh, I was just really happy once I got back here to be filming. I mean, especially in neighborhoods where, you know, not only did I walk around, but even on the far northwest side where I grew up, we filmed out there too. Right. And of course, we're representing Chicago even more um, truthfully this second season by not saying that the west side is the south side. And yeah, not some of the street the names was off a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. But sometimes they do the street names off a little bit just so we're not implicated in something that would be, yeah. you know, criminal or trying to like, we're not trying to out people or say right. this is bad or this is good. So sometimes they do that intentionally. But this is going to be a lot more truthful representation of the city in season two. All right. So I really got to ask, man. So you here to take over Chicago. You killing the pops. You going what? Marry the daughter and the son going to work for you. Man, you got it. You got it done. Somebody write this down. Who's writing this down? <laughs> that's a damn, that's a darn good theory. No, man. So, man, just tell me, man, how did you get into acting coming from Chicago? So um, I asked my mom if I could act because there was a show on when I was a little kid. Cause and you guys are all too young to know this show called Kids Incorporated. Okay. And it was uh, like Fergie was on it, and they did like these little acting sketches, and then they did uh, music. And I thought, wow, to be a rock star and do acting would be amazing. So I was 10 years old. I asked my mom, I want to be an actor. She said, honey, if you want to be an actor in a month, come back. So right. I came back. And so we, my mom opened the yellow pages. She looked up acting, nothing under acting. So she looked up theater. And I auditioned for a play at the Goodman Theater, the, okay. the Christmas Carol. I didn't get it, but I got a play out in the far, far suburbs, in the north suburbs called um, Lake Forest. So you've been doing this since she was a kid? Since I was a kid, 30, 35 years. Man, so what you feel like was like your big break? in terms of getting into the mainstream. You know, there was a film I did on HBO in 2003 called Normal. Okay. It was with Tom Wilkinson and Jessica Lange, and I think that that was kind of my big... It's hard to believe in yourself as an actor, especially because there's so much rejection, and it's easy to get kind of complacent in the rigmarole of, of being subpar or second choice or fifth choice or not getting the job at all. So to right. have the belief in yourself and then really enjoy the work. I think it's easy, just like in life, it's easy to get jaded and then just feel like you're a cog in the machine and that you're not, you're not going anywhere. Right. So you got to find a higher power. you got to find something that you love more than the craft right. to get you there. And then once you do that, people like start taking, it's like people take to you now. Now you you, it's like now you have to be Tommy almost at movies. You know, I don't know about that. Hopefully not. But but if it is, if that's my lot in life, that's my lot in life. As long as I can do a truthful representation of the character, live and enjoy and, and project the human experience and allow people to, to view the transcendence of that character and see some of their own lives. Now, I'm not saying that everybody should be out there trying to hustle and, you know, be about the street life. Right. But what I am saying is that you can see the struggles of a hard life on this character and the struggles of getting out of the neighborhood and what you find loyalty to. And is, does Tommy really have loyalty to the right things? Right. Is the game in the streets the right thing to have loyalty to? Or is it love? Because I think love that's ultimately fulfilling is what he's failing and that's wow. why he's ultimately never winning. Wow. I appreciate you, man. <laughs> Man, appreciate you, man. Hey, it's your boy MXL Guapo, man. Street certified news. And we here with Joseph Sakor, man. Not just, so guapo, but we just got a tidbit. We just got a tidbit of the information, man. We appreciate you for being with us, man. Thank my you for pleasure. coming to the always, awards. Always. Man. All right, brother. Thank you, man. Yep. Appreciate you. Good yep.